Hey, it's Rose. In this video, I'm going to show you how I turned a plain wooden box that I got at the dollar store into a dice vault for storing my D&D dice and minis. Everything I used for this DIY project you can pretty much get at the dollar store, uh, but I have a lot of it at home already. The only things I really had to go out and buy were the wooden box and the foam, and all of that only cost me around $4 Canadian. So here's what you'll need to make this. A joint mat, also known as a floor mat, also known as EVA foam. A cutting mat, some thin cardboard, I just used a part of a cereal box that I took from my recycling, some fine grit sandpaper, a screwdriver, a ruler, an X-Acto knife, a pencil and eraser, two paintbrushes, a wide flat one and a small thin one for doing designs, some low tack tape, two contrasting colors of acrylic paint, a paint palette and water cup to rinse out your brush, and your small wooden box. So I did four different designs to pick from for this box, and if you're one of my Patreon supporters, you can download them to use. The link for that's in the description below if you want, but also you can design your own. So the first thing I did was remove the hardware from the box with a screwdriver. Uh, this is going to make the box a little easier to sand and paint. Just make sure you keep all of the screws and hinges and stuff in a cup or somewhere because uh, they're very small and very easy to lose and I almost did that a couple times. So then I sanded the inside and the outside of the box with some fine grit sandpaper. This box is from the dollar store, so it's not amazing wood quality, but sanding it down will help smooth it out and look a little bit better. And it's easier for the paint to stick to also, so it's a good idea to do this. Once it's sanded down, you can use a wet paper towel or a cloth to just kind of wipe the dust off of it if you notice there's a lot. Next is to paint the box your base color. I went with a brown for kind of like classic treasure box look. Um, you can pick whatever you want. You know, maybe you have a set of blue dice that you want to theme the box around. You can paint it to match, you know, whatever you want to do. I used a medium sized flat brush for this and painted it in sections, letting it dry. Uh, Cause you don't want to handle like all the wet paint and kind of, you know, put fingerprints in it and everything. When the whole thing was dry, I did another coat just to make sure that the paint coverage was nice and even. Uh, you might have to do more than two coats, but two of the brown worked for me. The next step is to transfer the design onto the top of the box. For my printed out design sheet, I picked the good luck one that I'm going to use for this box, and then I cut it out to be roughly the same size as the top of the box. On the back of the paper, you want to go back and forth with your pencil covering it with graphite, making it pretty dark because you're going to use this to transfer the design later. So when you're done doing that and it's pretty dark, you want to tape the design to the top of your box, the design face up. Just make sure it's also facing the right way you want for it to be on the top of the box when you put the hinges back on. So you can tape the design in place with your tape. You want to use low tack so it doesn't pull up the paint when you're pulling it off later. Make sure you tape around the image, not over it, because you need the design to be visible since we're going to trace it. So once it's taped down, you can trace all over the lines of your image. You might want to go over it a couple times and press pretty firmly, because this will transfer the pencil graphite on the back of the piece of paper onto the top of the box. It might be pretty light like mine was, so afterwards, after I took the paper off, I went over it again with a pencil just to darken it up a bit so I could make sure that I could see it when I was painting it. Now that the design has been transferred, you can paint. I use a small thin brush and black paint to make it stand out against the brown base color. This is sped up footage, but just go slowly when you're painting so you get nice clean lines. And don't be afraid to go back over a line if you want it to be a little darker or it's not as smooth as you want.
So I think that looks pretty good. Now we can line the inside with the foam. So get your cardboard piece and trace the outside of the box onto it. Then cut out that shape. Now you want to measure the width of the walls of the box. I think this one was about a quarter of an inch or so. So measure that all the way around the cardboard shape you cut out. You'll have a slightly smaller version of that shape now. Cut off that outside rim and you'll be left with a piece of cardboard roughly the same size as the inside of the box. So I use this as a stencil for cutting my foam. Put the stencil on the foam and trace it with a pencil. You can see how the pencil kind of dents the foam and gives you a good guy line for cutting it out. Then you can use a ruler and X-Acto knife and cut out the foam shape. Since the foam is kind of thick, you might have to go through it a couple times to kind of get it a clean cut, so just be careful. You want to cut two pieces of foam out, so you can have a piece for the top and for the bottom. To put the foam into the box, you just kind of squish it in. Since the foam expands a bit, you don't need to glue it down unless you've cut it a bit too small. You can see here that the foam looks a little bit smushed but the foam will rise up a bit after it's left alone, so don't worry too much about that. Now that the design painted onto the top of the box is fully dried, you can gently erase over it to get rid of any left behind pencil marks. And the last thing to do is retouch all the hardware. So this is the finished result. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I usually keep a set of dice and a couple minis in mine. Uh, that rooster usually gets used as a random monster. I don't know if you guys use weird minis for stuff. And if you take everything out, you can even use it to roll dice in. And hopefully you roll better than I do. Here's an example of another box that I did, a different shaped one, a different design on the top. And I replaced the clasp on the front of the box with something a little different. I found it at the dollar store, uh, but most hardware stores carry clasps too. So that's it for the dollar store dice box tutorial. I like making these kind of dice vaults a lot because it's a cheap and easy way to kind of customize your gaming accessories and make something really personal for whatever kind of character you want to play. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video you can give it a like or subscribe for more, or check out the links in the description below to my Patreon and other places you can find me.